The first video uploaded to this channel was the history of Sin Cara, so I knew we were going to cover him on Bell to Bell when he's no longer with WWE. Well, 1,578 days after I uploaded that video, and the faceless luchador was released from World Wrestling Entertainment. You guys have been asking for this episode for a while, so let's close out Sin Cara's WWE career by looking at his first and last matches in the company. This episode of Belt to Bell is going to be a bit different, and some of you may already know why, and if not, you'll find out soon. The man behind the Sin Cara mask, Luis Ignacio Uribe Alverda, was born on December 22, 1982, in Mexico City. Like many other performers, he grew up in a wrestling family, and this helped give him an early start in his career. He debuted in 1998 at the age of 15, and spent the next six years gaining experience from all around the world. It was in 2004 that Sin Cara's popularity began to rise, when he became Mystico. Throughout the mid-2000s, Sin Cara was one of the top stars in Mexico, and even had a comic book based on him. While Sin Cara was doing great in his home country, he hadn't really wrestled that much in the United States. Well, that changed in 2011, when it was announced the man, now formerly known as Mystico, was signed by WWE, and would be wrestling under the name Sin Cara. After hyping up the newest luchador on the roster, Sin Cara made his official WWE appearance on the night after WrestleMania 27. Sheamus had successfully defeated Daniel Bryan, but it wasn't done and began a post-match attack. The assault ended when blue and orange light filled the arena and Sin Cara appeared from behind the Titantron. After nearly botching his entrance, the mass wrestler laid out Sheamus and gave the most dramatic point I've ever seen, and called it a day. He'd also appear on SmackDown that week and did pretty much the same thing to Jack Swagger. But finally, seven days after his debut, Sin Cara would get inside the ring officially and have his first match in WWE. On the April 11th, 2011 episode of Raw, Sin Cara charged towards the ring, thankfully clearing the top rope, and locked eyes with his opponent, Primo. Did you know? 50% of the wrestlers in the ring are still employed by WWE. Sin Cara first attempted the finger poke of doom, but Primo wisely backed up. Realizing that wasn't going to work, the two locked up. After a struggle, Primo came out with the advantage, but the agility of Sin Cara allowed him to send the Puerto Rican to the ropes. Primo came back with a different strategy and started wearing Sin Cara out with punches and kicks. It was once again Sin Cara's quickness that put him back in control, as he used Primo's chest as a launching pad and performed a monkey flip and drop kick to send his opponent to the outside. The debuting luchador is on a roll, and kept it going by jumping over the top rope and hitting a hurricanrana. Of course, you can't pin someone who's not in the ring, so Sin Cara went to get Primo back inside the ropes. However, the faceless one was too slow and got knocked back by a hard baseball slide from Primo. This allowed Carlito's brother to take control of the match, and once they were both back in the ring, Primo focused on wearing Sin Cara out with a plethora of strikes. But Sin Cara wasn't out just yet and managed to make a comeback by dodging a splash from Primo. After dishing out a few chops, Sin Cara went back to his luchador arsenal and sent his opponent flying around the ring. Primo briefly found himself back in the driver's seat and was going to capitalize with a move from the top rope, but a kick to the side of the head stopped him dead in his tracks. Sin Cara climbed up to the top of the turnbuckle, but as the next move was getting set up, Primo's foot slipped and the masked luchador plummeted to the ground. Sin Cara quickly returned to the ring and picked up where he left off. Once both wrestlers were in position again, Sin Cara closed out the match with a moonsault side slam, followed by the three count. I thought it was an alright debut match. It's more botch free than you'd expect, and the one that did happen at the end looked like it was more Primo's fault than Sin Cara's. There were a few times where there was a weird pause, like they didn't quite know what to do next, and to me, that was the worst part. Overall, a decent debut for the star we thought was going to be the next Rey Mysterio. Oh, how wrong we were. Only a few weeks after debuting on Raw, Sin Cara would be drafted to SmackDown. My guess is since the blue show wasn't live, they felt they could just edit out any of Sin Cara's botches. But as you know, that still didn't work. On SmackDown, Sin Cara had his first feud as Chava Guerrero, which saw the faceless one come out on top. Once that was done, we saw the imposter storyline unfold. In August, Sin Cara turned heel by attacking Daniel Bryan after their match. While it seems pretty straightforward, things got more complex a few weeks later. Sin Cara had just gotten himself disqualified from a match, but was then interrupted by Sin Cara. We would eventually find out that the Sin Cara we saw attack Daniel Bryan was an imposter, and the second Sin Cara was the original. Eventually, the two faced off, and the imposter was unmasked and became Hunico. This wasn't the last time their paths would cross, but we'll get to that. Not long after the imposter storyline ended, Sin Cara would be taken out of action due to an injury and return in 2012. During the year, Sin Cara formed a tag team with Rey Mysterio. The masked wrestlers had some success, and would even challenge for the tag team titles several times, but never won the championship. From there, Sin Cara really didn't do a whole lot, it was just kind of another member of the roster. Things began to change on August 19th, 2013, when Sin Cara lost to Alberto Del Rio and wouldn't be seen on TV for a few months. He returned in December, and while in kayfabe, this was the same Sin Cara we had seen since 2011. The man wearing the mask was someone different. 
Ironically enough, Hunako is now playing the Sin Cara character, and the original Sin Cara, Luis Ignacio, would be released not long after the character change. With Hunako under the mask, Sin Cara began a brief winning streak, but it came to an end in early 2014. After that, Sin Cara kind of fell back into the position he was at before. He would compete for championships, usually in a battle royal, and would still appear, but didn't receive any significant push. Things picked up though when he went down to NXT and teamed up with Kalisto. They eventually called themselves the Lucha Dragons, and would even win the NXT Tag Team Championship. They held the titles for the rest of the year, but lost them in January of 2015. Around that same time, Sin Cara and Kalisto began appearing on the main roster, and likewise began competing for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Like the tag team with Mysterio, Sin Cara and Kalisto would challenge for the tag titles multiple times, but never managed to win them. The Lucha Dragons would stay together until a 2016 brand split when Sin Cara was drafted to Raw and Kalisto to SmackDown. Now back as a singles competitor, Sin Cara began a short feud with Braun Strowman, which saw the Luchador lose every match they had. Once that wrapped up, Sin Cara's appearances on TV became fewer and fewer, and by 2017, he was mostly appearing on main event. Things picked up a bit after he was drafted to SmackDown and began feuding with Baron Corbin for the US Championship. While he would defeat the champion a handful of times, Sin Cara never got to hold the title. The Luchador's next feud wasn't until 2018, when he battled Andrade, and once again, Sin Cara would ultimately be defeated. A little while after that, Sin Cara underwent knee surgery and wasn't clear until 2019. He did appear in the 51-man Battle Royal at Super Showdown, but wouldn't show up again until after he was drafted to Raw in October. He started feuding with Andrade again, and while the show was different, the result was still the same. After that rivalry was done, Sin Cara looked to bounce back on the November 11th episode of Raw, which also turned out to be his last WWE match. Signs of how this match was going to end were apparent from the beginning, as Sin Cara's opponent, Drew McIntyre, got an entrance, while the faceless one did not. Using the size advantage, McIntyre plowed Sin Cara right into the corner and began wailing on him with punches and kicks. After being knocked down, the Lucha was lifted back up and immediately thrown down again. While the match was off to a rough start, Sin Cara changed that by sending Drew McIntyre to the outside and followed up with a suicide dive. Realizing there was no time for a break, Sin Cara climbed to the top rope and hit a huge moonsault onto the Scottish Terminator. Unfortunately, this only garnered a one count, so Sin Cara continued dishing out moves. Soon after, McIntyre found himself back in control after delivering a solid left shoulder to Sin Cara. Returning to his original strategy, the Chosen One kept his masked opponent grounded with a flurry of punches and strikes. However, it was once again Sin Cara's speed that changed the tide, as he continued a clothesline and delivered a series of kicks before concluding with a Hurricane Rana that sent Drew McIntyre to the outside. Since it worked so well, Sin Cara tried to hit a second Hurricane Rana, but received a power bomb onto the floor instead. The match was pretty much over after that, but the contest came to an official end after Drew McIntyre threw Sin Cara back into the ring and performed a Claymore kick for the pinfall and victory. As I said at the beginning, the person who was supposed to look strong in this match was Drew McIntyre. It's kind of interesting, in Sakara's debut match, he was the one being made to look good, and in his last match, the roles were reversed. The match itself is average, and only really notable because this is the last time we saw Sin Cara in WWE. The same day this episode aired, Sin Cara requested his release, and about a month later, the request was granted. He's currently under a 90 day no compete clause, which will expire in March of 2020, and it looks like he'll be performing under the name Cinta de Oro. From how I understand it, WWE owns the rights to the Sin Cara character, so it is possible that he could return with someone else playing the role. However, considering they didn't really utilize the character while he was still a part of the roster, I think it's unlikely we'll see him come back. I remember there was a lot of hype when it was announced Sin Cara was coming to WWE, but they gave up on him pretty early. The botches were always going to be an issue, and maybe that's why the company chose not to seriously push him from an early start. I will say, the imposter storyline was probably my favorite thing Sin Cara did in WWE. It was interesting, and more engaging than your typical wrestling storyline. But what about you? Leave a comment with what your favorite Sin Cara match or moment was. Also, check out the last episode we did on Umaga. With that, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.